NASA awarded SpaceX a contract to launch a science mission satellite after SpaceX has now overcome the many, many internal NASA biases against it. And I'm talking specifically about people within NASA who have an influence over who was chosen and what direction NASA goes in, having a bias against SpaceX for years. This week, NASA announced that SpaceX was awarded the contract to launch the Compton Spectrometer and Imager mission, COSY, which is currently scheduled to launch in August of 2027. And this by itself is not really big news. It's a tiny contract, it's $69 million. That is tiny comparatively. And it's it's not really a big deal mission. It's a, you know, a small science mission. It caught my attention because my background is in gamma ray astronomy. But it brought to mind to me the fact that SpaceX has had to overcome so many biases against it within NASA. And I'm not talking about institutional biases necessarily, although those existed as well. I'm speaking specifically about people within NASA who have influence, who have prevented SpaceX from getting these contracts or have, have been reluctant to trust SpaceX. Not quite five years ago, at the end of 2019, I was part of a selection panel for a medium-sized NASA mission. And I was at lunch with a group of people. I was probably the youngest, if not you know, one of the youngest people on this entire selection committee. And... <laughs> And so I was sitting at a table at lunch with the de facto unofficial head of the selection panel because of her vast experience and the way she took charge, and then several other very well experienced, you know, late career scientists and engineers. And they were all very specialized, very knowledgeable. NASA trusted them and their expertise and their opinion on its science missions. The conversation naturally turned to who would be launching the, the science mission that we ended up choosing. Who, who would NASA go with? Um, and of course, that's not selected by our selection panel. It was much more of a speculative conversation. But I was really struck by the anti-SpaceX sentiment. At this point in SpaceX's career, they had really proven themselves with uncrewed launches. They had not yet launched people. That would come a few months later with Demo 2 in May 2020. But at that point, they had several dozen missions under their belt uncrewed. Commercial payloads, payloads for national security missions, those high priority expensive national security missions, 18 commercial resupply missions for NASA. So NASA was trusting SpaceX to launch cargo to the International Space Station, and they had done so 18 times. And even the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, that's a NASA mission. And so NASA was already trusting SpaceX to launch science missions, cargo missions to the ISS. The, SpaceX had a pretty good track record. It was not 100%, but they had a pretty good track record at this point. But still, still, there were people in positions of influence now, no one here again was selecting any launch vehicles, but they were still a very knowledgeable people, very senior in their careers, who were trusted by NASA for their opinion, who had this very strong SpaceX bias, anti-SpaceX bias, I should say, where they thought that SpaceX was too young, not experienced enough, really go with a more experienced provider. And the reason why I bring this up is because it really ties to the point that I was making the other day with my video about Boeing Starliner. And I'll, I'll link to that video above. Um, so Starliner was the front runner when it was chosen in 2014 you know, 10 years ago, along with SpaceX. Everybody assumed that Boeing would get there first because of their long history, because they're trustworthy, and that SpaceX as the newcomer, and they didn't have quite as many successful launches under their belt in 2014, that they would be the struggling secondary. And of course, it ended up being the opposite. Now we see SpaceX continually, reliably launching astronauts to the International Space Station since 2020, and Boeing is the one who is struggling with its Starliner spacecraft. And so the reason why I want you to think about this is because I want you to always be learning and evaluating your biases. I don't want you to just trust a company just because they're new and they say grand things. I actually have a video, I'll link that above, about how to spot a BS space company. So I'll, I'll link that. Um, it's, it's well worth a watch to look for red flags about what a company says and their track record and their team and their funding and all of that, um, evaluating the realities versus what they say. But when a company is starting to prove itself, when it's starting to get a track record, unless there is a reason why you think it's not sustainable or some really big personal reason, like you used to work there and you see it's just a house of cards, well then, 
maybe reevaluate your biases, reevaluate what you think you know about that company. And this goes for not just launch, this goes for any space company, any space company that's out there that is newer, that you're less familiar with, that's has a less traditional track record in space that you just don't know enough about, go ahead and look into them and see what they're accomplishing. Not many companies are like SpaceX where they have a huge track record to point to in a short period of time. But still, if a company is doing pretty well at a reasonable pace, don't automatically assume that they aren't going to become the front runner in the future. Because how we see the space industry evolve is that the older players don't necessarily stay the big players forever. I mean, some of those older, actually, I think almost all of the older players from early space industry are um, absorbed into other companies. You can see how some like Northrop Grumman, for example, it used to be Grumman, and it's really brought in a whole bunch of other companies along the way. So companies change and evolve, of course. I'm not talking so much about acquisitions and mergers and all of that. I'm speaking more along the fact that there are more players now. And because there's more players, it's harder to keep track of everybody. And it's harder to really understand who's trustworthy, who's not, who's in it for the long run, who's not, who's a flash in the pan, and who's gonna actually change the entire world over the next few years or next few decades. And so I want you to really pay attention to some of those newcomers that you don't know much about and reevaluate what you think you know about that segment of the industry. And again, it, it could be launch, but it also could be uh, satellite manufacturers, or it could be communications providers, or really any area of space that is fast growing, because that is something about this industry. It's not one industry for one thing. It's a collection of industries, but it's also fast evolving. Slow, you know, compared to how we want to go. We want to be, we want to make progress faster, but fast evolving and that the players change and the progress changes and the things that we pay attention to and prioritize change very rapidly. What we prioritized five years ago is not what we're prioritizing now. And what, and the players that were the front runners, that were the, the leaders five years ago are not necessarily the same players now. And players that you've never heard of five years ago are suddenly leading in their respective areas now. Just keep that in mind when you think X company can't do this. Like the woman or the people at the table at lunch saying, SpaceX can't launch these science missions because fill in the blank why because they weren't around when I was a younger engineer or scientist therefore I don't believe that they can do it well either she wasn't paying attention or she dismissed the fact that suddenly SpaceX was becoming the front runner had significant launch growth compared to its competitors at that point in late 2019. Space is fast evolving, which means you need to be constantly keeping up with the news. And not all of it you'll get overwhelmed, but the news that you care about, which is why I'm thankful that you're here watching these videos as I try to break down specific topics for you. I'd be honored if you stayed with me. I create a video on space news every non-holiday weekday. Thanks for tuning in and stay informed.